If you have a Winnebago Rebel, you probably agree that the perceived brightness level of these lights here in the bedroom area is somewhere between supernova and thermonuclear explosion. So they are not really that useful here in the bedroom. Let me show you. See? And to fix that, I want to install these lights here. They are kind of gooseneck RV reading lights. They are dimmable and they can be moved out of the way really because, well, they are on a gooseneck. And of course, an easy option would be just to remove these lights and then put these ones on instead. But I don't really like that because I'm thinking with bouncing around while driving, the gooseneck will come down eventually. And I don't know, it doesn't really look that pretty. So instead I want to mount them here to the side, not really replacing these, just adding these. So in the resting position, it would look like kind of this. And then of course they can be moved out and be used as a reading light. And then the same here obviously on the other side. And in order to mount them, I either have to remove the entire panel and then route the cable from the existing lights into the base of these new lights, or I can simply put those new lights in and then try to fish the cable from these existing lights behind the panel and into those new mounting holes. And I think that's what I'm gonna do first. I much rather not remove the entire panel, but if it doesn't work out, if I cannot get the cable fished behind here, then, well, I guess I have no choice but to remove the panel. Another thing I need to figure out is if there's even enough room behind the sides of this panel for the, the screws to go into. I mean, I'm sure there's the van wall somewhere behind here and likewise on the other side. And I need at least maybe, I don't know, half an inch or better an inch, three quarters of an inch space behind here for the screws to get into and have some room to, to get the cable in. So I think I'll start first with the very, very small drill hole that I can then put a little probe in and see how much room I have before I'm hitting something solid. I think there's enough room, but I don't know. I'll start with a really, really small hole just to see what's, well, not to see, just to feel what's behind here. Oh well, this goes in quite a way. Well, same on the other side. Oh yeah, there's plenty of room. So I can drill a bigger hole now and I'm going for a quarter inch. I don't want to go to a half inch just yet because if I use a too large drill, it might get sucked in when I'm drilling and then I might drill way too far. So I drill slowly with, with just a small one, a smaller one and then It might also help to run the drill in reverse just to kind of ream out the hole instead of actually drilling it because if you drill it there's always the risk that the, the drill catches and gets sucked in and then you might be drilling way too much, way too far into. Next increment, half inch. Now I need to get these ones out of the way and hopefully that gives me enough access to get a cable over to the new hole. So they need to be turned a little bit and then the plastic housing can be taken off. And then it's three Phillips head screws. Two and three.
Well, and now for the part I'm not so confident about. I need to snake a wire through from this hole all the way to this one. And I'm using some, I mean, this isn't the final wire. This is just something to fish the actual wire through. I'm not sure if that works out though. If it doesn't, well, then I have to remove the entire panel. After trying with the wire for a couple of minutes, I gave up. So that's not going to work. There's some foam backing here. So whenever I put in the wire, I got caught up in this foam and there's really no clear path, especially around the corner. So I'm going to remove this entire panel and that might make a more interesting video anyway. There's a bunch of screws all around and they are hidden behind these clips. So with the screwdriver, can pry out the cover. And I'm not sure yet if I have to remove the window trim or even some of the mounting screws for the window itself. I guess we'll find out. And I have a feeling that a lot of these screws securing the panel are different lengths. So I have this piece of styrofoam and I'm going to mark all the screw locations and then I can stick in each screw into its corresponding position. So hopefully then I can get it back together the right way. See the ones on the top are self-tapping sheet metal screws and then the ones on the side wall are regular wood screws and then the ones at the bottom are also self-tapping sheet metal screws but much longer ones. And I also have to remove a few screws here from where the screen attaches to the back wall. They are all black, so they are for sure different than the other ones. Well, is that all? Can I remove the panel now? Let's find out. have to remove at least the trim around the window. These are four Phillips head screws, one in each corner. So these are the things here in the corners, in all those four corners, those triangle shape pieces, I guess they need to be removed as well uh, to remove the frame. So it turns out that these triangle shaped pieces cannot be removed. They are actually attached to the frame. So once the screws come out, the entire frame comes out. So let's try again if I can remove this thing now. The panel still is stuck somewhere and I'm wondering perhaps it is also glued back to the sidewall. Maybe not intentionally, maybe some of the foam sticky stuff attach, attached itself now to the sidewall. I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe I don't even need to remove the entire panel though. Maybe I have enough access now if I bend it slightly forward to try again my cable fishing trick here. So I'll give that a try. Okay, so this one. Got the 
wire from here all the way to here and I was able to pull it out by bending this slightly forward. Alright, this is the first one and I think this was the easier one because I had access from this side. I'm not so sure it will also work on the other side. We'll find out. So that's a success. I got the wire from here to here. And hopefully from here to here isn't that hard. Famous last words. Got it. That's it. Before I wire those lights in and mount them on the side panel, I actually put the side panel back in place. I really don't like if my van is not in drivable shape, and right now it isn't. You can actually see all those screw holes in the side wall, so I just need to align the panel put those screws back in. That should be relatively painless. The rest of the installation should be relatively simple. I need to install the mounting plates. These ones attach to the wall and then the lamp attaches to these things. And originally I thought I'll install them with um, riv nuts. They hold really well, even in this plastic here. But then I thought, well, I might not do that right now and instead use the supplied uh, wood screws directly into the plastic. Because if they wiggle loose over time and no longer really bite into the plastic, I can always drill a larger hole and then install a riv nut. If I'm going with the riv nuts first, with the larger hole and that wiggles loose over time, then I really have nothing else to mount into. And now all I need to do is connecting the cables, this end, will connect to the feed into the existing lamp and then obviously the new lamp will connect to this cable and I need to check polarity first. I don't know if the white or the black one is the positive one. So it turns out that the black one is the positive one and the white one is the negative one. And I guess that corresponds with Winnebago standard cabling where, I mean, they use yellow for positive and white for negative. So these lights don't have a yellow one, so they couldn't use the yellow for positive, but they could use the white for the negative side, for the ground side, and then they just pick the black one for positive. Well, the final connection is between the lights, those two cables, and the ones that are now coming out of my back wall. Red to red, black to black. And one more time on the other side. As an added bonus, these lights also have a USB-A charging port. 
Well, and to finally secure them to the wall, they need to be slid over this mounting ring and then a little set screw fixes them to the base. And that's it. When they are stored, they are pretty much out of the way and then they can be just folded out and rotated into whatever position I need them in. And they are dimmable. This is the lowest setting now. If I hold the button pressed, they get brighter, stepless, to the maximum setting. And if I turn them off and then on again, they retain that setting. So they always come on at the setting they were, they were um, turned off at. If I keep the button pressed again, they get dimmer. Again, off and on at the same level. And if I turn them on and keep the button pressed, they turn red, which is not dimmable. And that's all I had for today. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.